So for those of you that saw my resonator restore, you saw this cool jig to put splines into the headstock of a broken headstock to reinforce it, make it stronger. And if you're playing authentic, you need one of these to repair your Les Paul when it's going to break because of the design. So oddly enough, and this is totally a coincidence, I got a Dean guitar off eBay maybe two months ago. You can see that in the picture here, so I'm not bullshitting you guys. And it's got a cracked headstock. And we're gonna repair this today using the String Tech Tech Deck workstations from McConville Guitars. It's a really cool system. As I was looking to repair the resonator, I thought of a thousand different ways, and then I saw this, and I was like, that is an awesome design. I ordered one, the carriage wasn't set up right, there was a slight bend. They sent me another one, which is great, great customer service, and now it's working and running. You need a Colt router, and it's got these, I don't know, channels. You set up the guitar into the channel, into the jig. You get your router up here, plop it in, go back and forth like that, flip it around, and do the other side. This is offset, so if you get the guitar lined up in the center, all you have to do is flip this, and it routes whatever size channel you want. If you remember on the resonator, I did a quarter inch, and then I did a half inch channel, because I screwed up the quarter inch, and I didn't like the way it looked. So we're gonna repair this Dean Les Paul copy. It's got a little bit different of a shape. It is a mahogany body. It's not, well I guess it is, it's a maple top. And the broken headstock. So it's got some Grover tuners, the booby headstock, I don't know what that is, but it's got two ridges. Gonna roll with that. We're gonna first glue this on, and then we're gonna have to do some patchwork with some Bondo or filler, and fill in any of the missing headstock here. And then probably what we'll have to do is tape this off and respray it on the front. And then on the back, we'll have to respray the neck as well. It's got this really cool finish like a matte black finish, kind of like what you'd see on a BMW or one of those Audis, one of the really cool, like a satin black. Uh, the top has a little bit of an indentation here. We'll have to sand off the top, and probably what I'll do is sand off the top and the headstock, spray it the same color. All right, so we took off the tuners, made sure everything looked clean, and test fit it for a second there. It's got a bunch of chunks missing, so we're gonna have to get a little bit creative to fix this. Got three clamps. Since I test fitted it, I'm pretty confident this will glue on. We'll put a little bit of glue in each piece. The trick with the glue is not too much and not too little. And I'm trying to get the glue up inside underneath whatever this plastic is that they overlaid. Which I don't like plastic overlays. I'd rather do a real wood overlay. But that's me. So now the wood is going to expand as it gets a little bit wet, so it's going to be a little bit harder to fit this. And as I'm moving some of the stuff around, I've got a little bit of chippies floating. Rub this on this side. Do one little spread right there. Drop right there. 
Alright. Got enough glue. Make sure my clamps are set up. I'm using just tight bond. That's my standard go-to. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and slowly push it on. We're not gonna try and put it down. What you wanna do is slide it back in where it cracked. Get a much better fit. If I just push it down, I know it's not locked in, but if I slide it in, I can feel it lock in. And it feels locked in. First clamp is going to be right in the center here. You don't want it over tight. You don't want to squeeze the shit out of it and all the glue comes out. But you want it tight. There's a feel to doing this. Second clamp, we're gonna come right here and these are too big. I got these at Harbor Freight as well. They're mini C clamps. You can see as I'm clamping it, it's pulling it together. Pushing some of this glue out. That chip scares me. I don't have that chip. Oh, that sucks. That's a huge chip out. So we're gonna have to get creative somehow. Second clamp, same thing. We're gonna come from the bottom side here. I can't. These clamps get nice and tight. In terms of where we can place them. And as I'm clamping it, you can't see this here, but I could say I'm pulling this side together. Squeezing a little bit more glue out. And if I could get a clamp right there, I would put one. Maybe I can put one of the smaller ones on there. And then these are the mini minis. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, it's too tight. Hmm. If I get a little piece of wood, maybe it'll hold. Let's see. It's not holding. Maybe this other clamp will just pull it together. I don't think it needs it. I'm actually gonna just slide this one down slightly. Oh, it did need it. As I clamped, squeezed out a little bit more glue. So we'll put actually a clamp right there in the center. And I got these deep reach clamps, which work really nice. Got some pads on. I can't remember what I was doing with these. Take the top pad off. Let's wipe some of this glue away. The chunks missing from this headstock. Suck. And this is perfect, actually. Adjust this one slightly. Four clamps. And I got a little bit of glue squeezing out everywhere. 
which is a good sign. I'm just gonna wipe off the glue off the wood. When you're doing repairs, Q-tips and epoxy and toothpicks, if you don't have those, you're not good. So we'll just clean off this glue. Trick is to let this sit for about three or four hours and before the glue gets way too solid, you pop it off. So we'll let this sit three or four hours, pull off the clamps, and then the next time I film here, we'll be in setting this up on the jig. All right, so we got the workstation screwed into my bench. I've got the guitar sort of placed onto my bench into how it's sort of set up. What's cool about the whole workstation is that it clamps down and it's pretty slick system, but I don't have that kind of cash. What you do is you clamp down here, you clamp it down here, you use these, I guess, screw clamps and screw it down on each side and then you're ready to go. What's neat, I think it's actually a really innovative design, is that he has this little pin and what you do is you run this through and you can actually see on this side where the depth of the router is. So you come in here and you can exactly see where you're going. I'm feeling pretty confident that this is set up. I've run this through a couple of times this morning already. I think I'm taking too much out of the bottom here, so I'm going to drop this slightly. That looks pretty close. So what we're going to do is start clamping all this down and you want this centered as best you can. And I've got a machinist ruler or caliper that I'll double check this, but let's just start clamping it down like so. Let's see where we end up. All right, so the headstock is spot on, actually. So we'll go ahead and begin to tighten down these clamps. It's nice to have a mini wrench handy. Tighten these down. No. All right, so we're all clamped up here. I didn't like the way I, I was clamping here on the bottom. So what you see off camera here is a brace with a piece of wood going over it, which holds the body. And then on the back side, I braced the body with a piece of sandpaper and a piece of wood. I didn't clamp it down out of the room, but I know that this neck now isn't going anywhere. It's nice and tight. And then I tested this, like I said earlier, the coolest thing about this 
is that you've got a little guide pin for your depth so you set your depth and I was going here and just double checking a couple times to make sure it looked good flip it over and then do it again so we're all set we're gonna plug this in and route away one thing I don't like is I don't have a vacuum attachment here so I can get a little dirty the one thing you don't want to do is have this off center and then hit your truss rod and have it jump back at you. Don't want to do that. So I got my headphones. We'll flip this on and go. We're going to do my left side here first. Make sure this is flush down. You want to just go down in a consistent motion. That's the first pass, nice and clean. Let's vacuum this up. I've got my GoPro on this run, so you can see how I see. Get this lined up. Again, go both arms in a consistent motion. So I noticed from my first pass to the second pass, my guitar wasn't sitting properly on this jig. It was slightly up, so my run was a little bit longer here, and it was just slightly off. So I've got a 8mm router bit, which is just slightly larger than a quarter, and I'm just going to make another run through and make sure that it sits properly. You've kind of got two chances to do this right, and I'm still learning how to set this up. All right, so that was actually pretty good. I made a couple passes, made one more adjustment, and this is perfect. I've got the right distance between each one, so when I make the patch, it'll look perfect. Didn't adjust any of the tuner holes, and I'm deep enough to get a really nice piece of maple in here to fit perfectly. I got this template, which I got from the cage here. Just draw it out, sand it, get it nice and smooth, stick them in with some glue, clamp it down, and you're done. So let's go ahead and cut the splines and go. We took that template outside, had some maple that was 3 8 inch thick, cut them, and then went over to the bandsaw and trimmed them off just slightly get them so I don't have to have such a huge clamp clamping them in marked where we think they're gonna fit play with them just slightly needed a little bit of tapping to get them in come back with some tight bond and I'm going to glue inside the headstock and then glue the pieces as well as I push these in the glue is gonna get pushed around everywhere so I wanted to make sure that 
I've got a nice surface of glue across the headstock and the piece of maple itself. Clamp those down. And then I had to make one adjustment and just move that spleen down slightly. A couple clamps. And we're good. We'll let that sit. Made sure the glue is all over the place. And then we let this sit for about two weeks and came back, took this to the bandsaw. And I'm trying to film it and cut it and I went just like a hair too far towards the end here I couldn't do both at the same time so my GoPro I'm trying to make sure I let you guys see it but then also see where I'm cutting and just took it maybe like a sixteenth too far and cut a little finish that's all right we'll clean that up so once they're trimmed We'll come back with a bunch of tools here and get them flush. Got a spoke shave, a file, a couple other tools. And we'll just get them nice and sanded down. Combination of the spoke shave and the file worked best. And then once we got closer, we pulled out the power sander. And I usually don't like taking a power sander to a headstock. But that backside was just giving me a little bit of a problem. So we're going to come over with some Bondo. And I needed to use the Bondo because there were just a couple of little gaps here and there. But then on the front side, there are significant gaps. I didn't have the wood chips so I needed to do something. I actually put three coats of Bondo on. The first one was just sort of a build coat. The second one filled in most of the gaps. And the third one was just a couple tiny little spots here and there. But that was the best way to fill this. I couldn't rebind the headstock because the fretboard's on. I didn't have a setup to do that. So this is the second coat. We'll let it dry and sand it. And then we'll go back in video here. So if you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I know repairing a neck is not the most gracious thing to see, but we are going to do a giveaway for this. And the uh, Bondo and the sort of reconstruction worked out pretty well. I don't have time to seal it and then re-sand the rest of the neck and finish it. I've got a couple of other projects I've got to move on to. But the Bondo fit in nice. I sanded it down, it's all ready. Probably what you would do is seal it and then paint it. And I didn't know how far up I was gonna paint the neck. The way that this is made uh, just required way too much more work for me than what I wanted to do at this point. So as a giveaway for you guys to practice finishing, I thought that was perfect. There's a couple scratches here you still gotta get out. I may hit that. Uh, the binding looks pretty good. I didn't over sand into it. And then you got two zingers here as the hardware was coming out. But this is just a good giveaway. I needed some practice at using that tool and this was the perfect practice piece. And now I wanted to share the goods with you guys. What's interesting about this crack, as I sanded it, I could see that this was a multi-piece neck. So even with the multi-piece neck, this probably got stepped on. You can see there's a piece here, a piece here, and a piece there. So even a three-piece neck didn't withstand either the step or the break. But you know how the giveaway goes. Leave a comment, subscribe, and we'll get this out. I've got the box that it shipped in originally. I'll ship it to you. But all you gotta do is figure out how to finish it, and you've got a cool project for you to work on. So thanks for watching, guys. Play Authentic, and we'll see you in the next video.